this episode is just starting very poorly. Yeah. Man, I don't, well, know I don't even head. know what I'm going to do for, uh, you know, or have Mickley do for this video's edit. He's just going to have to start the video with Smells Like Kenosha at the end of the song. Because literally, I pressed the start recording button, and then train cars exploded everywhere. Hi, Heist. Welcome to uh, Railroads Online. Oh, good. Oh, my goodness. This is the fastest Kenosha yet. <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you die already? I wasn't even going that fast, and the cars just exploded behind me. Okay, oh, hey, well, well, uh, well there's, so there's we, the engine. We, we made some money. We did. And, and we bought a Climax, and I, I parked it on the track, and now it's gone. I so. see it. It's, I found it. It's at my oh, location. Oh, you found yeah. it? Is yeah. It closer, it's closer. It's right by me. It is still rolling at, like... Two mile I, an hour. I swear to God, I left it with the brake on and the regulator off, so I don't know how it's moving. Did, are, are you alive or do you are you dead? I mean, the train cars are all over the ground, but uh, I'm alive. Okay, well that's uh, not... so the UI says that you've got zero brake and zero. Okay, and and I put the brake on and it immediately stopped. So, um, bro, I swear we I left it, it with brake. Man, I don't, well, I don't even know what I'm gonna do for, uh, you know, or have Mickley do for this video's edit because uh, he's just gonna have to start the video with Smells Like Kenosha, like, at the end of the song, because literally I pressed the start recording button and then train cars exploded everywhere. All right, I'm coming back to help you fix this problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess I'm I should a set these switches while I'm here. Victim of my own hubris here, that's fine. And now I'm gonna drag the climax around to death with the uh, the Glenbrook because the climax is uh, slow and I like going fast. So you know, he said, looking at his pile of train cars from going too fast. I don't think you should be allowed <laughs> to drive the Glenbrook until speed limits are removed. Don't you, don't you put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby? I feel like I feel like I feel like yeah, but you know, in the movie in the movie, um, you know. Talladega Nights or there, whatever. Um, after he gets into his accident, he immediately drives excessively slow. Yeah, well, 26 miles an hour is still faster than anything you, the game you can seem do. To okay. Go, like you seem to want to go faster after you die from going too fast. So well, it's not going fast that kills you. It's suddenly becoming stationary. That's the problem. Come on, you know how this works. Did you hit the climax? Is that why you? No, uh, no, I don't know why they exploded. I really was only going a little bit over the 17 mile an hour, and I didn't think I was doing 22. Not by the sound yeah. of the exhaust beats. I remember when apparently. I tried to get out of a speeding ticket by being like, "Listen, officer." I was I just wasn't going, going a little, little I wasn't over going the speed that fast. <laughs> it was just a little fast, okay? I don't understand why you're getting mad at me. Yep, and I just yep. uh, kicked another car right off the tracks because uh, I ran oh, into a pile of cars. Is, what a wonderful adventure we're on. It, this episode is just starting very poorly. Yeah, so we bought a Climax. It's uh, it's somewhere. Oh, there it is. Look yeah, at that. Here we are. There's the hey, Climax. There's it's, it's, uh, it's number five because Fibonacci says 113 or 11235. And here's the five. Um, so it is number five, and of course it's Red Five standing by. Red you Five know, standing by. It's the uh, ultimate helper engine, so it's standing by. I, you know, if it's, it's I the listen. Joke. I'm not there very clever with names, okay? And I asked Heist for input, and he didn't have any, I, so that's where we ended up. I didn't. Anything that I yeah. could think of to name a climax was horridly inappropriate. This is great. So. This is nice, dude. This is. <laughs> this, dude, is a, this is. Look at this artisan pile of cars, unbelievable. okay? Um, you only we get literally the best. just we we railed up all the cars, right? We bought some more. We have twelve stake flats now instead of eight. We bought some more, so we bought the climax. And then with all the extra money we had, we bought more stake flats, so we could do bigger trains to the iron mine and eventually the coal the coal mine as yeah. well. And so we bought more flats, and we were like, well, to save some time, we should just you know rail them all and buy them all off camera. We could just explain to people like, hey, we bought some stuff, we bought a climate, you know, and, and we'll be on our way, no problem, before the episode even um, starts. And, right? and then and then I proceeded to put all of the new flats on the ground. So it's all fine. Of them. Yeah, they're it's all fine. messed up now. It's great. They, you they imagine if we tried to like patina, pump okay? these in such a way to get them in order again? You got nine going to three. Uh, dude, okay. the, the order of I the don't cars. Have pins, I don't have pins in all these and links, so I don't know. Well, I'm gonna shove them all back together, and then you can figure it out. It's fine. Yeah, but I can't pin. I can't put a link. Well, in then, it. then we will learn where you failed. Go forward. And then, uh, Go yeah. forward. Forward. All right. Back. Working on it. Okay. Good. 
Uh, I think that one's good. That one might be good. This one's got a link on it, but that one's running away. All right, hold on. Are you pushing back now? Yep. Good, good, yep. good. Let me check. There's one break all that's right. on somewhere. All right, perfect. There might be a break on somewhere. We'll, I'll check all... Oh, there's a break on. I just turned it off. Maybe that's why you bend. Maybe. Having breaks middle of the train now, ever since the spline update, causes Makes it bad goofy. result. Yeah. If you have breaks on, like, either end, it seems to be okay. Although compression seems to work much better than tension. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, breaks and tension around a corner, it, it uh, instant derail, it would seem. I guess so. It's the, it's the thing to do. All right, pull it forward for a sec, pull real quick. Pull it forward. And just, like, stop. Just honestly let off your throttle. There you go, that's it. Go back. You don't even have to pull it forward. You just have to, like, let off your throttle. You know, let the cars... Let them kick. Yeah. All right. Well, your, your back five stayed on the train, so that's cool. Yeah, not everything accordioned in on me. Yeah, and at least we didn't have the load yet, although it doesn't really matter. But, you know, it's you're not wrecking someone else's cargo. Just wrecking... Yeah, just our, wrecking if our you train. If you bend a car, right? If a train bend a car, it's immediately... It has to get... You got to back up more. I'm still rolling away. I, I'm seeing that, yep. But immediately, like, that car's got to get refurbished. Like, there's no way... Yeah, I mean, so sometimes it may not be bad enough. Inspecting it? Do you just, like, put it back on the track and say, yeah, screw it. If it wobbles, it wobbles. No, the, the carmen and the car department definitely have to inspect everything and make sure that it's safe and suitable for service before continuing on. But sometimes it is a case of put it back on the track and drag it somewhere under a, a wavered move. Uh, to make what's sure that the, it's uh, legal to, to get to a place where it can be fixed. So, What's the regular maintenance schedule for a car? How often do you guys have to bring your cars in to get maintenance? Oh, goodness. So, I mean, we're we're different than, like, the modern-day railroad being in historical tourist railroad service and everything, being that our cars are ancient and made out of wood, mostly. Uh, so... <laughs> We tend to do annual inspections on our cars, and then they don't accrue enough service days to really do much beyond the annual. And then, you know, if, if we notice anything during train inspections, we inspect the train every day that we operate it. Um, right. We'll, we'll do the little things that come up in between. One weird thing that tends to happen frequently for us is that um, there's some kind of hornet or insect that likes to uh, make a little nest in the end of the, the brake release line, the retainer. And so you'll end up with the brakes not wanting to release because it's full of these like mud mud daubers or something they're called. Uh, they make their little nest in there and then it blocks the airflow from releasing. You know what I learned? So. Uh, speaking of mud daubers and brake lines, I have a natural gas fireplace and furnace in okay. our house. And uh, our fireplace this year, we went to draw a brand new fireplace and it didn't want to come on like it was sputtering. And okay. so we call the technician, the guy who installed it. And we're like, listen, like our fireplace is sputtering. And he's like, I bet you it's spiders. And I was really? like, what? And apparently because it's a pilotless system. So the pilot light is off. You're not just bleeding gas all the time. And when right. you need to turn it on, the pilot turn, it releases gas out of the pipe and then sparks. Right. Um, and because it's a pilotless system and there isn't a constant flame, apparently the smell of natural gas is like intoxicating to spiders and they'll oh, go weird. inside the pilot tube and make nests in there and they'll it'll be sufficient that they'll block the flow of gas coming out of the pipe that's whack i I've never, never knew that because yeah. like we used to have a different fireplace there and then we replaced it and the one we had before had a pilot light so it was just always burning so like obviously a spider's not going to go into the burning flame to, right to make the but yeah apparently they just love natural gas uh, we are like, lined well, into the we are lined into the camp. wrong stuff yeah we are going breaking we need to back up yeah, we're, we're going all the way to logging camp. Here, hold on. Let me just kick it into reverse for you real quick. <laughs> yeah, you're r real helpful there, champ. All right, I'm just... <laughs> don't worry about it. It's... Okay, so, like, realistically, obviously there's an issue with the gear edges of the physics. It's been around since, like, you know, day one. Like, we yep, had to get the yep. same thing with the Heiser. But, like, in real life, if you full-ragged a gear engine, is it a better, like, a better chance of getting wheel slip than... If you full rag a regular locomotive, is there any difference? Is like wheel slip just, you know? Wheel slip is really uncommon on geared engines because the the way that the gear ratio is working. You're like it's so low. It's so such a low ratio. I mean, it's usually almost like a three to one. Um, and so it's, it's really challenging 
particularly when all the weight is on the drivers as well, to get right. them to slip. It's not unheard of. It's not impossible. But it's really, really bad because so when you're the wheels... saying this is, this is slightly unrealistic, is what you're slightly, saying. yeah. And you would have grenaded every bit of that running gear by spinning those wheels that Do fast. They, a gear engine at full speed would it even move this fast? Like, would the piston be able to go that fast? Uh, probably not. You're you would be melting bearings and eating things so like pretty quick. Like this yeah. is more reasonable. Like. Yes. You know, the climax has a top speed of about I think 11 mile an hour in the game, and that right. is honestly not that far off. Um, I think they can run a little bit faster than that. It depends on the design. But, um, you know, th they tend... They're, they're a weird breed, the Climax, because they have this the interesting struggle of... Th they have awful vibration when you get up about seven or eight miles an hour. There's Wouldn't clips... Can any gear engine, though? Because, like, they... I, I know you could kind of tell from here, but I looked up some stuff, and the gear engines mostly used square axles back in the day, and then yeah. to, like adjust the axle length they would have those expansion joints where it's like a bigger sleeve with a smaller sleeve yes. inside of it and it would just stretch as like it goes around corners and stuff um, yeah because the axle changes like i don't think it's modeled here so the, the thing the thing with the climax and, and the climaxes are worse for vibration is that all your reciprocating mass is kicked up at a 45 degree angle almost right and so you you start to get bouncy uppy downy and the, but the Heisler would have that same issue. It's 45 degrees out. But of it's opposed. The motion is opposed oh, I, side to side. Right. Not it doesn't cumulatively just add up together like on the climax right. where they're both aiming the same trajectory. And then the the Shea you have three so that you always have one while it's going down basically. Yeah, but the Shea is is, is uh, we're not going to talk about your dumpster fire school project, okay? Like we're just. <laughs> Yeah, so the climax... We'll get, we'll get, I don't even know what we're going to use a Shea for. We have to get one. We we'll have get to, one eventually, to... and then, I don't know, we'll maybe build I don't it a know circle we'll of track it. that it can just run around in circles in, I guess. Yeah, I don't exactly. Know what else we'll just build a little for. kitty ride with, like, a caboose on it, yeah. and the Shea just runs on the kitty ride over and over, like, just runs circles around the freight depot, you know? We can make a little Shea amusement park. That's perfect. Yeah, I think that's probably the best use for it. Yeah. But the Climax... I mean, they vibrate like mad. There is a great clip from an old documentary called Rock Trains on the Mount Rainier Scenic Railroad where they had a huge washout uh, that ruined a bunch of their alignment and they still had a functioning rock quarry on their alignment. So they went to go get a bunch of cars full of huge stone and riprap and everything to fix the, uh, to fix the washout on the railroad and they used their steam engines to do it. And the first day they ran uh, a 282 Mikado but the engine didn't have sanders for the reverse direction. So when they were backing up the hill, they didn't have any sand underneath the uh, underneath the wheels and they kept slipping the drivers. And it anytime you slip drivers in an oil burner, it's pretty bad and pretty dangerous because it can be really easy to make the fire totally overcome uh, the, 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 or sorry, make the fire suck in a bunch of cold air into the firebox, which can damage the tubes. And they show it in the video that all of the tubes started leaking around the tube sheet because the slips were so violent that the firemen couldn't react fast have... enough to, to okay, fix it. So we've never we've never really addressed this either. Um, if you have an oil burner, wouldn't the tubes, like you're talking the tubes that go from like the, the firebox, firebox to the smoke box, through, yeah. Through the boiler to the smoke box. Wouldn't the tubes in an oil burner be smaller just because you can, like, you don't have the same level of residue and soot in the in the burning? Actually, like, it, they're they, the same size, but you actually have a worse residue problem with an oil burner than a coal the burner. The oil leaves worse residue than, like, coal ash and stuff? Yeah, because the coal ash has the hard cinder pellets that get sent through that effectively sandblast the inside of the tube, so you don't need to worry about anything. It all gets ejected right. out the stack, but oil doesn't have the hard particulate that does that. So it's actually part of the regular job on the oil burner as a fireman to sand the flues. You open up the firing valve super hard, get a roaring fire, and you dump sand from a bucket into the fire as the engine works, and it sandblasts the tube and cleans the tubes out. And you all thought sandblasting was a modern day thing. Nope. Nope. That's some old school stuff. But the That's point is, kind of ridiculous. They, they, they made the tubes leak on the Mikado, and so the only other engine they had that was carted in and in service was the Climax. And so they had to pull the super heavy train at the Climax, and they had to do it rather quickly 
to keep the railroad open. And dude, there is video of it doing like nine miles an hour and it is just jumping up and down the track. It's absurd. Is the climax, so it was a coal burner though? Like an no, actual, it's an like, oil burner. It was an oil burner. Yes. But this it, back this back tender area here that we've got here with this pile of logs would have actually just been full of half water, half oil. Yeah, it would have had a, a oil cistern in it as part of it, yeah. Interesting. And if I'm not mistaken, I think actually the model that we have in the game is actually an oil burning climax, and it's See, just modeled to burn wood because my, uh, other this fuels are. My, my dream for Railroads Online, it would take five minutes to fix it in code, but this is my dream, right? You have engines that burn wood, right? Okay. You have engines that can burn wood or coal, but the BTUs get a lot better if you burn the coal. Then you have right. to make the fuel consumption a lot worse for wood. And then you have engines that burn oil. Because we have an oil refinery, we have a coal mine, and we've got lumber camps. So you could start with wood burners, work your way through coal burners, and then into oil burners, and actually have to, like, you know, you need to resupply this oil depot or whatever, then you have to go to the, the refinery to get the oil barrels to do that. Yeah, that would be, you know what I mean? be cool and accurate and historic. I mean, railroads but then you need, you need the fuel consumption to be a little bit more severe with wood. The wood fuel consumption right now is really it's a lax. Joke. It's a joke. You can kind of just, yeah, you can kind of just let your, your wood pile burn forever, so it would have to be a little bit more severe. Absolutely. I know people were asking what settings we play on. We play on uh, the pretty standard settings, realistic physics. And normal um, industries, yeah. With normal industries. And normal industries, that just affects the ratio of products, so everything's one-to-one -one or one-to-two or whatever. If you put it on hard, it just means you have to deliver more stuff to get products. Uh, and if you put it on easy, you have to deliver less stuff. But realistic physics affects the tonnage calculations um, and all that yeah. stuff. You gotta go back, by the way, one car. I'm working on it. Uh, gotta kick your brake on the climax off. So anyway, yeah. So that's how we play. I know people are asking. Um, you know, and uh, I guess we could to make our lives easier. We could play on easier industries, but I mean, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't mind the, the balance with easy or with standard industry difficulties. Fine for me. Yeah, the realistic the one physics is the is the biggest. That's the thing because uh, the the different physics modes they just change the the weight of the load. So even like right. arcade physics is just the empty cars and nothing else. Right, regardless of the load weight. Yeah, exactly. All right, three more cars to go. As soon as this loads, you can get on going there. Am Perfect. Good? Okay. Yeah, you can move. Uh, you're gonna have to load the. I'm gonna go set these switches before we forget, because then we're gonna forget. Oh right. If I set them, we can. I can't see the uh, <laughs> what cars are loaded and unloaded because it's so far away. Despite oh, my view uh, distance being all the way up. Just keep going. So. Just keep going. Keep more. You got okay. one car, full car at least. Okay. One and a half cars. One and a half. I can I can figure that out from here. I can see from here. Yeah. Keep going. Keep and going. Another half car. Yeah, yeah. Half car, give or take. And you're good. Yep. How's? Oh, I'm gonna keep sliding. Is that all right? Yeah, you should be good. Cool. You'll get something loaded there anyway. Something's I'll be over loaded. I'm just gonna set these switches, and then so we come out of this one, then come this way, and go back out through the switch hub. I don't care what you say, man. I love the hub. I think the hub is fantastic. Uh, my game crashed. So that's, Sick. That's, Perfect. That's cool. That's cool. That's what uh, happens when you load wood. I guess. Yep. The game. You know what? It's. I heard he installed a sensor for once you've derailed enough the game just boots you and says sorry that's enough railroads for you for now <laughs> you, you you're done you're cut off you're done that's too much too much railroads dude you can't you can't bin 14 cars in the first three minutes of, of playing you have to take a break i guess so clearly I, I something is that. wrong with you <laughs> all right heist we're fully loaded Fully loaded and ready to go. Man, 12 come here, cars. Come here, real quick, though. come here real quick, though, before you before you get going. Listen, listen to this. You ready? Where, 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 where are you? You where? ready? Yeah. Listen to this. I'm going to turn on the turbo. Yeah, I got, got that supercharger going, you know? Because everyone in the comments is going to tell me that the generator gives you power, even though no, it it's, doesn't. No, uh, it's the Dynamo, which is the steam electrical generator. And the, the funny the thing line. is, uh, that is uh, that is the sound that I recorded and edited for QMA. 
<laughs> that's it went, that's so the dynamo the steam, off of one of our engines. Yeah. The the steam dynamo, it's that thing on the top there, right? The little yeah, thing. Yeah, it's spitting out steam at the angle there. It's right in front of the steam dome. Right. Um, yeah, and it, it's it's got a turbine in the one end. That's a steam turbine. You and that's, hop on. We're gonna we're gonna take sure. about six years to get there. With, uh, yeah, uh, I guess that is true. So with the speed of with the speed of the climax. Well, I mean, I'll just shove you the whole way, so we'll get there. Yeah, fast. but you're gonna you're gonna bin it if you shove. So I won't shove careful. full full speed. We'll, I really we'll just don't want to rerail above. for the yeah. third time in this in this recording. The first one, everyone didn't even get to see because it that was is true. Just that bad. And that now, is true. Like, no. Before we even started filming, we actually peed yeah. in the cup because the, I was just going back to a couple of the more cars and they just exploded. See, Heist, Heist always says, quote, the cars just exploded. But I yes. would like to point out, I never see these derailments happen. I just hear the cars exploded <laughs> and then I have to clean up the mess. So well, I really, you know, I really am starting to think that the cars don't just spontaneously combust as Heist has so uh, I, nicely I don't been like this accusatory over. tone, Con. Okay? I'm just saying... Like, you know, it's it just seems a little off to me. <laughs> this doesn't seem like proper railroad practice, by the way, pushing through your tiny little bar. That would Yeah, no, it's really not ideal. And my pilot path. is definitely hitting your uh, switcher step boards. It's fine. Yeah, you just, like, lift me up off the track. Like... Yeah, this is no in no way, shape, or form good practice. Like, we shouldn't be trying to run the Climax faster than it could go. If they actually right. had to tow one or something, they would disconnect running gear or put it on a flat car or something. But, would you um, disconnect you know. that like front plow? Would it, would it, trains even do that? Like, is it the cow catcher or whatever? The the pilot is what it's called. The cow cow obliterator the cow actually. Obliter yeah. yeah. Well, you know, sometimes not really. Uh, there's videos about that on the internet. Anyways. Yeah, I know. I've uh, seen some videos. <laughs> of some later engines got smaller pilots, yes, and then they were more easily able to double head and things. But in this yeah, era, was it was the just actual super point of long. a pilot. It was just to prevent like clear stuff off the track that was going to hit your wheels. Like that's, that's yeah, it. prevent damage from hitting anything else or damaging the wheels or anything important like that. And and they actually work sort of as a rudimentary snowplow if you need them. I've actually plowed. Uh, like two and a half or three foot deep snow with 346 with a pilot that looked pretty similar to the one on the Glenbrook right now. A little shorter, with, but... With like yeah. the big openings in it. Big openings in it. The snow was compact enough that it like welded itself together and it didn't try to come through the openings and just made a sheet of kind of icy right. snow on the front and then it just pushed through it. And it was actually very surprising that it worked that well without a plow. But back to the dynamo, your generator there. Uh, it's I just got... finally turned it off. <laughs> well, you know, you're supposed to have your headlight on, Con. Come on. Uh, really? Are you I supposed mean, to light your headlight even if it's daytime training? Is legally that... these days, yes, you have to have a headlight on running at all times. Right. Like, on Back almost the any day, railroad. Your oil lamp lit up the whole time. No, God, no. And in, in this flag. era, they probably wouldn't have cared. Yeah. But Actually, so, that's true. You should get your flags up. Do you? Can you? Do you have uh, anchor points for lights on? Um, I I'm not so, right? sure, but I, I don't know if we necessarily need them. The the lamps in railroads online are a little strange because they don't make a heck of a lot of sense, and you know they don't make sense to me in my modern-ish the NRGW knowledge of what you use class lamps and uh, marker lamps for on the trains. So it may be just the case of the earlier era was a little different, but it may also just be the case that they're just modeled wrong. So you know details. Um, but we would only need the lamps on front, at least in my experience and understanding, if we were an extra train, a non-scheduled train, or the second oh, so section on, of a scheduled Anything on the schedule train. is just whatever. Just, you know, follow yeah. the schedule. If we're on the schedule, we don't need lamps to, to designate that we're extra. We're already scheduled and everyone should know about us. We need to cut back some trees, man. This was so much nicer when these were like aspen trees or whatever they were. And they're totally that, different positioning. Now yeah. that they've changed, they are they're much uh, bushier, is the word I guess. And they're, yes. They're just, yeah. They impede the view a lot more. <laughs> they really you gotta do. Got to do like a nice slow ride and just cut down trees as we drive down all the tracks. You know. That uh, that is a thing that happens. <laughs> what they drive a train slowly and jump off chop down a tree and then keep going i mean uh, i was thinking more specifically in the modern era at the railroad museum having the groundskeeper right on top of the tender with a chainsaw but yeah <laughs> actually and just hack down the the, the, the hedges that are getting the too big close limbs to that were too close yeah i've seen that done um and i'm sure that happens on short lines and they actually have some dedicated maintenance away vehicles that have like scary wall of chainsaw built into them yeah for i was cutting gonna say things. why don't you just yeah. go all out and put a wall of blades on the side of the car and, yeah you know, some that exists out and... in some places because you know dealing with that much maintenance you know automate it so 
Yeah, I mean, you can, yeah. You guys are, you guys literally live, you have this tiny little, like, like, what, 100 acre plot or whatever you have at the museum. It's like 15, but yeah. <laughs> okay, 15. And you guys just, you live like it's, you know, 1901. And it's the Wild West. Well, I mean, know, we right? have, we have lots more safety requirements than it, like it was 1901, believe me. But yeah, some of the stuff ends up being old school, but... I mean, really, the safety practices and safety culture is so much better than it, it was even just 10 years ago at the museum. This you guys is definitely... better through, you better give people the full authentic experience, like be baffled by cell phones and things. And like, you know, <laughs> someone pulls out a cell phone, you're like, what is this what device? What is this technology? I, what, is this, what is this photo thing you see here? Like, they've they've done some amount of react, reenactment stuff and had actors and, and try to do that. And some of that, sometimes it's really cheesy and sometimes it's fun. Uh, one of the events we used to do is like Wild West days and they'd hired like all these Civil War reenactors to come out and they'd dress oh up God. as cowboys and they'd have guns and they'd rob the train and it would be a whole thing and uh, apparently there was some politics that happened and unfortunately we no longer do it but that was always a good a good bit of Wait, fun. How, that actually like I mean if, as long as you're not you know shooting people I feel like that would actually be kind of fun. Or yeah like... no they're, they're all they're all guns that don't shoot real bullets they're all designed to shoot blanks and only blanks so Right, uh, you but know, like it's a just blank bunch of big still ejects show. some stuff sometimes. Oh I'm yeah, assuming. no, you don't put, you do not put the muzzle anywhere near anyone, and no one aims at anyone regardless. But yeah, right. Yeah, it's interesting. It could be, it would be. I know it would be a pain in the butt to clean off, but it would be awesome to do the same thing with paintball and play paintball and raid a train. <laughs> dude, I would, I, dude, yeah. So I mean, hundred percent. I mean not at a museum when we're already struggling to paint the locomotives and cars and keep them painted with real paint and uh, trying to keep them historic as possible. Well, paint, paintball but, paint washed them off. It, it, but, you know, you just drive uh, around yes, in the rain that would a little be, bit. That would be very fun. <laughs> what, okay, what happens if it, your locomotives are fully covered? Like, if it's raining, you can cover up enough, you'll never get rain in the cab, you're fine. Your coal pile gets rained on, but I guess that doesn't matter. Like, it's... No, there. and actually, sometimes wet coal is actually better than dry coal in the firebox, as stupid as that sounds sounds interesting because you, you toss it on and when it's wet the water flashes to steam and that it can actually violently break the coal apart which can reduce the uh, oh i guess we're gonna run through the passing track that's fine yeah no we um, haven't used the main like once since we've gotten it so it's, it's fine um yeah <laughs> the uh the steam bursts the coal apart and you actually get more efficient combustion right away uh, you know, if you're counting on the coal to burn for a long time, maybe it's not ideal, but uh, I actually know some firemen who prefer to wet their coal with the deck hose on the steam engine before they shovel it in. So some people are particular deck, about deck that. Deck hose being a hose that, what, comes from the injector line or Exactly. Something? Yeah, the delivery side of the injector has a, a hose plumbed into it on our engines, and so you can open up a, 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 a valve tap. while the injector's running, and then you can squirt out the... the side with the hose useful for cleaning the engine and also really useful for finding the injector down because injectors only pump one phase flow right we talked about this many episodes right, ago. yeah they you pump can't, liquid. They don't can't pump, pump two don't phase pump. and so when yeah. you find the injector down you're reducing the amount of water that's being supplied to it and so you'll see on a lot of the tourist railroads with uh, the rio grande engines you'll see the hose going out the side of the window and, and you, you watch them spraying, and and then they bring it back in. You're like, well, what, what the hell are they doing? Why are they squirting outside? And it's, they're trying to see what the water flow characteristic is through the delivery line. And so oh, right so when it like, gets to a, a shower head kind of mist, right. right when it gets to that, if you go any further, you're going to be all steam, and then it's going to break. But you can see just exactly right when you're putting the minimum amount of water in which is really what you need with those big superheated engines going up the hill. Uh, you just kind of keep it all the way fine down to the minimum setting all the way up the hill until you almost get to the top and you open it wide up and so that it doesn't get why, pissed off. Why would, why? Like, why, what, wouldn't, like, you're going up a hill, wouldn't you want as much water in the boiler as possible to make sure the boiler doesn't overdo the, the, the tubes or whatever? And then, like, because when you so, go up a hill, everything slopes, right? But, like, why would you want minimum water in the boiler when... Well, so, this is a, a challenging little set of questions here. So, the minimum amount of water in the boiler means you're generating the most steam. Because you have to right. heat up the least mass. So, technically... A good fireman is a fireman who can carry the water as low as possible without being unsafe. 
And so a lot of people will hear that and just have been trained. Just because then you heat up, like, you know... You're heating up less water, so you're making steam more easily. Yeah. Less mass heats up faster. Yeah. And a lot of firemen right. will hear that, and they've been trained explicitly to always have enough water. And yes, you always have to have enough water, but it was definitely a thing back in the era when these things ran all the time that you wanted to carry the water as low as you could while still being safe. And that, that's not what we do in the preservation era necessarily, because we're not really worried about tonnage exactly you don't, you to don't that. Have crazy, that yeah, it's you fine. Have you know, we're, we're set up to not have to play it that close to the line. Um, right. But with the superheated engines that they run on the modern day Cumbres and Toltec, Durango and Silverton, even when they're pulling up tonnage up a 4% grade, they're using the steam so efficiently that you're just keeping the water level constant even with minimum flow, which is completely different than a little engine. When we ran the 20, the RGS 20 on the Cumbres and Toltec, Dusty was telling me he got to fire up Cumbres up the steep side. Tonnage, another engine behind us, double header, you know, everything, bunch of cars up the 4% that you had to have the one injector open wide open and they had to burst the second one to keep the water level the same every now and then with how hard the engine was working. And that's because it's a saturated steam engine. It's not a superheated steam engine. So it's not right. getting near the same amount of expansion. So, I mean, that's really the difference between so, an 1800s engine and a mid 1900s engine. Here's me engine. being stupid though, right? So here's me being stupid, okay? You have a piston. Your steam engine can only go so fast, which means you can only put like, the, the piston has a certain volume, which means if you do the math and you work it out, wheel speed, the amount of times the piston moves, etc., you can only, that'll require a certain amount of flow rate of steam to maintain that system, right? Yes. Okay. So we're just gonna go for this, right? Like we're not gonna bring up the class 48, let's just- oh, We can try just... it. We can try it, these two engines. I haven't done the math, but it might work. Uh, either, but we might as well just try it. So we'll try happens. it and then we can always shove on the back if need be. Yeah, if we have to. Anyway, so, okay, so, so, Back to the, 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 the conversation at hand as we just, this is so loud. You know what? I'm just going to try and make it up this hill before I ask my question. My question <laughs> makes sense from a thermodynamic standpoint. And I'm sure there's some answers. So well, we'll maybe talk about your textbooks, but you know, it's fine. I, I did a little bit of a textbook video earlier this week. I finally got out the, this is how you do train math. Uh, video and I finally put it out and showed off my Excel spreadsheet and talked about why horsepower is kind of a stupid rating for a steam engine despite it having yeah, I been saw that. made I saw your for. Title for that. I didn't yeah. actually watch the video yet. But, wow. Um, wow. Thanks, Colin. You know, I got, you know, I got, I was busy got editing stuff and to stuff. Do. It's fine. It's fine. Alright, we're on the six and a half percent. I can't really tell what's going on with my wheels. I can't. I You're like still, the climax like is I'm so slipping. loud. It's so bloody it's loud. It's so loud yeah. and my I'm at like 14% reg and the wheels are just grinding away. Yeah, you so need I to give us like... uh, give us sand and give it about as much as you can without slipping because we're already losing it. Well, now I can go 100% without slipping. So there you go. So okay. It's perfect. Yeah. That's actually great. Now we're we're picking up speed again, I think. It's hard to it tell just needs to on get, It needs side. to get the load. It's such a weird balancing act because you have to get the load. Yeah, and, and then you do need the sand, I think, with the Climax. I have I the think, sand actually, on. Yeah. But the sand on the Climax, it's coming out on top of the wheel, which I feel like is not... That's No, that's not how that works at all, but that's okay. It's literally like the spigot is kind of like ejecting the sand on top of the, the front of the second wheel on the first set of drivers. I don't know what the deal is with that. Are you at full yeah. reg with sand and stuff? Uh, I don't here? have sand on, but I can't slip, so. But yes, I'm wide open back here. All right, if I turn sand off. Oh, I just Oh, slipped. dude, no, 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 no. Now you have to shut off and, oh, it's gone. That's I caught not... it, we're good. Oh, man. Oh my Will God, I make can't it believe up how hill? bad that slips if you don't have sand. Dude, this thing's, this thing's actually screwed without sand. Good thing we got a sand down there. Yeah, sand we're gonna head. need it. Yeah, I forgot about that. God, it's been so long since I've had Climax in this game. Yeah, it I, is I the forgot strongest about, and then I on forgot the 10% about the zero to 100 far. thing. You gotta go 100, zero, 100, zero. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's okay, we'll just have to fill this up with sand every time before we take it out. We're good. God, it's nope, still nope. going. 12 cars, one helper. Yeah, six and a half percent. We're fully on the six and a half now. Dude, yeah, we are. And oh my god, dude, you know what this means for the coal mine, though, right? 
the load's going to be climaxes? heavier, and we're going to need <laughs> this, this grade well, we is need, steeper. We need two climaxes is the, is the answer to that. Or, well, actually, no. We need the climax and the Heisler just both down here. Yeah. Uh, g give us a Heisler so we can have a chime whistle. Yes, it pulls a lot less, but I mean, I want the five chime. But I mean, if we're going to the coal mine, too, with like a 12-car train, we'll probably just double it. Like, let's be real. Yeah, I mean. Dude, I am true. shaking. Man, it is it is shaking trying to go up this hill. Do you see this? I Are do. It's jiggling me, it too. Is, it is. It is. Oof. Unbelievable. I mean, that's that's actually kind of fun because that. I mean, it probably wouldn't do exactly like that, but I mean, that's what these engines do when they're working hard. They really do shake, left yeah, and right, up and down, the, it, everything. Line, yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy. I can't believe this thing is. Uh... All right. So the climax is mounted on two sets of like I guess trucks, right? Yes. Each, two each trucks. wheel has individual suspension. Each axle has suspension. You can see it built in there. So the truck is literally just a fixed hard point to the body with a rotation joint, and that's it? Or does it have tilt as well on these, or is it um, before it the day of that? It, mm, it depends on the way the bolster is set up, and the bolster is the uh, actual joint between the truck and the body. There's the, right. the body-mounted bolster and then the truck-mounted bolster. And usually you can get a little bit of tilt between the springs on either side of the bolster in most trucks anyways. But right. you also had bolster joints where rather than sometimes it was just a circle and a circle and kind of a dish, but some of them were spherical joints too, so that you could get that bit of rotation in there as well relative to the body rather than relative truck components to bits. So uh, it depends. I don't really know this prototype necessarily, but uh, yeah, that some of them did that. Bro, this thing is bad. This thing is is unbelievably amazing. It's Dude, so it's, good. It's it pulls hard. I mean, I it doesn't say, go fast, but it pulls as hard. Because I, I can't swear because it's YouTube. I want to say bad bum, but like you know, it's not a bad bum. It's just you know, it pulls hard, amazing. man. And and we're gonna get up to a full eleven miles an hour when we get on this flat pit. And <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm probably gonna have to pull off the reg a little bit because I'm probably gonna get some wheel slip again. He might. We'll have to see. Unbelievable that this thing can just power through it. Yeah, oh, dude, I mean, this is... This quarter, I lied. This is some serious, like, geared engine thing. Like, this is this is what they were for. Not necessarily okay, it's so just where, a helper, but, yeah. Where's the, the I guess, the, the most... Um, the most cut. You always talk about like the Rio Central Rio Grande, or, or not? No, not Central Rio Grande. That's ours. That's the, us. Um, yeah, the Denver yeah, no, Rio Grande Western. Denver. Yeah. Rio, I'm getting all of my railroads. There's too many Rio Grande railroads here. But you. So did they have any geared engines that they regularly employed on their the lines? The Denver and Rio Grande Western. Uh, I I wish I knew the history better. I don't believe they ever had any geared engines on the Denver and Rio Grande Western. The Rio Grande Southern, their bastard stepchild, uh, did right. have a Shea for some amount of time, which is funny uh, because yeah. the Rio Grande dealt with worse grades than the RGS did. Um, so, uh, I don't know, it's a little strange, but uh, yeah. So, I mean, they didn't really have them, but they also didn't have, they weren't really the setup for it. They're trying to be a big mainline railroad that used three foot gauge. Most of the logging engines you saw were for very industrial railroads, mining railroads, logging railroads things of that nature is typically where you saw any kind of logging engine like that. I'd ask you more questions, but my engine just got really loud, so... Yeah, I was gonna say, I've got the game volume turned down really far, and it's still, like, you are so much louder than me, and I don't know why. Interesting. I have the sand off now. Oh, oh you just lost it, yeah. With the sand off, I can get the reg up to about 89%, and then you lose it. I was going to say, that's that's the number I recalled being the, the problem number. So. Yeah, about 89%, and then you lose it no matter what. But, like, I need 100%, so sand's back on. Yeah, and th that's a bit of simulation on the railroads online part that's just not accurate, because there's no, like... Well, they're trying to detect wheel slip, and... They're trying to, but it doesn't make sense, because it doesn't consider the load behind you which really right. af significantly affects wheel slip. Uh, I didn't understand the relationship between load and wheel slip until I was an engineer for a little bit. And we went from running the 10 car day out with Thomas train with 350 people on it. That way, you know, it wasn't tonnage oh. for 491, but it was a lot. And we it's went harder from... to slip with more weight on the back. 
Uh, yes, harder to slip with more train behind you. Think of the free body diagram See, and that, of the wheel. And that seems, to a normal person, like like even as, as an engineer, that seems counterintuitive because you would think you're not adding any extra friction on the front engine, but right. you're putting a brick on the back of it, so you would think that it would be harder for you to get that engine to move with the brick than without a brick. It, you know it what I may mean? be harder to get it to move, but it's also harder to get it to slip because think of the free body diagram. You have a wheel... You have your tractive force from your piston, and what's right. opposing it is your resistance, your engine, and the resistance of the train behind you. And so, if you are right, but your point of friction on the track would be the point that gives way first. We are hunting like crazy, and I love We're, it. It's we are, and it's just barely oh, making it, man. Turbo. Hold on a minute. There we go. There you go. Got the generator. It's gonna help. Yep. yep. That's gonna help. Yeah. yeah so. When you have less load behind you, if you go full throttle on the engine, you can overcome the friction more easily, right? Because your throttle setting doesn't care about how much adhesion you have. Oh, we ran out of sand. Oh no! <laughs> Brakes on! Brakes on and we'll go get the class 48. We ran out of sand. We, That's, uh, I, I've got brakes on. You go get the class 48. I'll, I'll, I'll... You'll hold that there. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm going to teleport. It'll probably be faster. 89% reg. Oh, my goodness. 88%. Unbelievable, dude. I can't believe it. All that right, is so 88%. hilarious. Yeah, I ran out of sand. So it can't... Uh, we got to go faster to make it up this. You also would not run out of sand anywhere. Like, the, there is several hundred pounds of sand in there. I've put 12 50-pound bags of sand you guys have to buy sand special dome. sand. It's not just like go to a beach and get some sand type uh, thing. It is like usually type. we use a washed silica sand. It's, so it's, it's very a, clean like a sand. very clean. That way, you know, it's not gonna be too terrible. Whatever, like, and you could buy it in bags, and it's convenient to store. And it's not whatever. gonna cl clog up your valves and stuff. Yeah. Or... So I mean, you also have to have the sand set up right because if you get wet sand, it doesn't work. That's like right. that is the worst. Nightmare is having a dome or a sandbox full of wet sand. We had that happen at the BNSF, and I had pipe when fitters. When it just turned to like cement, basically. Basically, like... it turns into cement, and they they sat in there, and they put fans in to try and blow air through to dry it out, um, and they chiseled out with crowbars the sand, and it took them three shifts, two guys, to clean out the sand dome of a, uh, a diesel locomotive, or not a sand dome, but the sandbox on the front of a diesel locomotive, because it had just completely filled up, because uh, either someone left the, the hatch open or um, the car body had rested through on top and uh, it was raining into it, because, well, you know, Seattle stuff. If we had a better road engine, we would have made it. Yeah, we're gonna need a class 70 or something. Um, or if we had uh, more sand. So yeah, I don't know. that's uh, yeah. Of all the things to run out too soon, like the fire doesn't totally wrong, but the sand is what runs out fast. That's really stupid. That's okay. Oh, I got my reg up to ninety one, and we're actually moving. We're actually moving. Oh, wow. unbelievable! What's the slip? Oh, ninety four slips. Okay, hold on. If I go reg at like ninety one, whoops! I can I can still drive ninety two. Okay, ninety two doesn't slip. If I take the brake off, but interesting, I can only go uphill if I'm at reg 92 with the brake on, and as soon as I take the brake off, I slide backwards. Interesting. That's uh, the science make a lot of sense. behind this is mind-boggling. Some serious roads online science, man. Uh, we're we're yeah we uh, we need more sand. Are you? Make sure you approach slowly because, you know, if I all of a sudden lurch forward, I'm gonna know why. Well, I mean, I can only approach so quickly because I still haven't come up to temp. And, oh, perfect. Uh, so I'm down to 85 PSI right now, and I'm trying to make it up. Uh, are you still past the flat section? Yeah, just barely, but I'm, like, I'm not moving. I'm, like, kind of creeping forward, but I can't tell if it's me creeping or just, like, wheel slipping. Really All right, I'm finally making steam, and I'm full reg, so I'm on my way. Um, you were talking about... We were talking about the free body diagram at the wheel. Uh, my experience was I got used to and had muscle memory of running the 10 car train with 350 people. It wasn't tonnage, so I wasn't coming wide out on it, but you'd open the throttle pretty far, shut it back, and you'd just march out of the station. And I got so used to that over those weeks running that train 
uh, that when we did a charter like the next weekend afterwards with just two cars, I had my muscle memory. I was like, I know how to run this engine. And I did a burnout so hard in the station. And I was like, why the hell did it do that? I was like, oh, I didn't realize how much of a difference the load made, like how much that really played into it because yeah, it I, is it, opposing your still, resistance. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it just seemed, I understand the free body diagram. You have force in one direction, force in the other. All right. I'm other, shoving like, on the back now. So if you have, you have the free body diagram makes sense. If you have a force of the piston forward, then force of friction plus the force of the load weight behind equals, you. Yeah. Right. So and they so, combine to equal. So, so it makes you, sense from like, if you look at it as like a problem on a piece of paper, like it makes sense to me, but like trying to understand how that works at an actual physical level right starts to not make as much sense to me like i get it i understand it like it you know it makes but it doesn't you know what i mean it's like, one of it's those things that... that that takes time to understand i think because there's a lot of stuff about engineering that i thought i had a pretty decent understanding for but the, some of the nuance of it was lost on me like one of the points right. i made in the recent vis video about horsepower and steam engines is that yes you're pushing the piston around with steam but where the piston moves is constrained by the boundary conditions of the rods. It's right. not the steam that sets where the piston goes. It's the rods yeah, it that set where it is. The rod, the rod, if the piston, if the, you fill the piston with steam, it doesn't matter because the rod itself has a giant wheel it has to move. And until that wheel moves, the rod yeah. is stuck. It was that sort of concept and like the concept of electrical load and engines only working as hard as they were loaded to that took me a long time to understand because it's like, well, you press gas pedal and it go, right? Like, what do you, well, what do you mean? Well, yeah, but, kind of, but, but the difference, okay, but the difference, and I'm just going to wait a sec, because the difference in that is like you have a transmission on a car where a steam engine doesn't have a transmission. Right. So what happens if your wheel gets to a position, not where it's stuck, like, locked horizontally or whatever, but what happens if your wheel, like, the load is too heavy, it's not slipping, and the wheel can't spin because the load's too heavy and the friction just is keeping it on, you know what I mean? Like, like what if you have a cog railway, right? And it just, you cannot, you don't have enough force to pull whatever loads in that cog, and you're, but you're pumping maximum steam into the cylinder. Like, what would happen? It would just the steam would just go in and just fill the cylinder, and then it would reach an equilibrium yeah. and stop. Yeah, you, you equalize, and either you leak past your rings or you don't, um, and you sit there and equalize, and and then and that's that. Equalize with you don't oil the pressure, and that's it. And that's yeah. what you get. And then you're like, oh crap, we can't go anywhere. And yeah, then, when you're when you're centered up on the steam engine, and one side is not admitting steam in to give you traction to start right, on the slow hill. Slow down a bit, because I gotta go set this switch. Okay, I'm off the reg. Yeah, you're probably good to go back, actually. Okay, you you've got both of those engines. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do some switching here. All right, I'm gonna go run back down the hill here. Um, <clears throat> when you're centered up on the steam engine and you open up the throttle, it'll get to the point where it starts putting pressure back against the throttle, and it hands you the throttle is what we always say, where it right. tries to throw the bar at you, and the engine will not move. And you, I mean, there's always some amount of leak that happens between rings uh, or out cylinder cocks or something. So you, you always have some amount of hissing sound to accompany it with it. But it's like, okay, well, you're centered. You're not going anywhere. That's that. Done. You know? So you got to roll back and, and try again. So you need both That's sides so to start. All right. So the conversation, the question I had at the very beginning before we even got onto this topic of tractive effort and stuff. Um, we were talking about like thermodynamic usage states. of steam, superheated right. versus saturated. Yeah, right. So you have a piston that can only consume X flow rate of steam, no yep. matter what. Mm -hmm. It's just it would based on the piston size, how fast it can move, how fast all the mechanical joints can move, how fast the stuff can spin, etc. You're going to consume X amount of steam with um with your 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 engine running full out let's say right at its absolute max speed whether or not it's under tonnage it's irrelevant the wheels are spinning at the fastest speed so that consumes x amount of, of steam so what i don't understand is when you design a boiler with a firebox and the fire size wouldn't you design that to be able to produce enough fire to meet the maximum flow rate of steam that the engine can output like well so here's here's where the fun water level low you know what i mean like like i understand you increase the water level and you produce less steam but like 
wouldn't you just make it so maximum water level still produces enough steam to obtain well max so the the nuance of it comes in right here where steam locomotives don't necessarily actually use the most steam at their fastest speeds okay because when you start running faster and faster your valve is moving faster and faster as is your piston which means even in farther open valve gear settings johnson bar settings you're still not admitting full boiler pressure to the piston so as you start getting an engine that has small wheels running fast like the, the 315 that I used as one of my examples in the video that you didn't watch. Uh, <laughs> wow, it, it, this uh, guy expects it, me to watch all his videos. It starts to... This is this is nerdy right up your alley, though. It starts yeah, to I lose know, horsepower I, I at... on my to-do list. Okay, good. It starts to lose horsepower at, like, 15, 16 miles an hour because it can't keep boiler pressure on the piston anymore at the settings of valves that it can run at that speed at. Right. So... The maximum boiler horsepower, how much horsepower of, of steam is being created by the boiler, is kind of irrelevant because you're being limited by what you can actually admit into the cylinder itself. So sizing it is is not necessarily so much exactly about making sure it gets maximum flow rate at maximum speed. It's figuring out what the design speed needs to be and make sure that you can supply that much steam at that speed and that the valves can supply uh, enough that steam design, to so make that, that work. So that design speed would have some, they're going to say like, if your boiler's at this boiler level of water and you've got this high of a fire, you can get this amount of steam to run at like whatever design speed is or whatever. That's like generally the, math, the rule of thumb. The math has thumb, to yes. have all of the like all of the equations. Like if someone overfills the boiler, they're going to get less performance out of it. Or if they precisely, you know, and, and there's, I mean, obviously the, the manufacturers did a lot of this in math. Three, by the way, the uh, in cuts of three. Okay, obviously well, just for the just for the beams. I think I don't know if we can fit all six lumber, but the beams definitely right, not. Right, right. But it's right. fine. See, I parked in the perfect spot. So we cut the three off, and then I shove them into one of these empty lanes and then i cut pull the next three and shove them all right well i made the cut and we'll just use the climax as the the helper you know switcher yeah may as well yeah Dun. perfect and you're knuckled in take them back and i'll get your switches set yeah the uh, the manufacturers did math like that and tried to figure all that stuff out but it, really practically for the railroad they figured out kind of what tonnage an engine would be good for on a certain alignment and then the speed kind of was whatever the speed was. And if you had a right. really good fireman who could make more steam and maybe you could run a little faster, but sometimes the locomotive mechanically limited it and, and it was just kind of the, the name of the game. It's one of those things that, yeah, you can try and do all the math, you're lined, bring them ahead, but a lot of it is sort of lost in the mythos of the operation of the locomotive itself. So that's uh, it's, it's one of the so you'd get fun really, things. Like, it's kind of like, it's like a car if you could customize the amount of gas going to each cylinder while you drive the car. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And that much. wasn't just controlled. Like cars are cars are very complicated machines, but I mean, the formula is pretty simple. More RPM equals more power. And that's, and that's- Well, like, until in, you get valve I know I'm gonna get stuff, crucified but, yeah. by car people out there, but in the most layman's of terms, that's why if you look at your horsepower rating on a car, it's always at a certain RPM. Spin, spin crank faster and it still do make faster, yeah more force consumes I mean, more fuel based on volume of cylinders but it's all very like kind of straightforward math but with steam math it seems it's very it's very different just because it's like the amount of water you're heating up could change all the time and it's going to be a different input temperature based on like what your boilers at, like what your your tenders at and like yep it's it's just yeah you could really get good at running trains fast yeah, it's it's one of those things that you 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 could do the math, but ultimately doing things as crew, you end up kind of figuring out what actually makes the most sense for you. Pretty. All quick. right, how much money do you got? We gotta do the money check. I got two hundred seven dollars. Um, I now have uh two hundred forty nine dollars after unloading that car of beams. Without oh, checking. I see how it is. I think that so. probably would have been probably would have been less than forty dollars anyway. Red, it should be. I think they're I twenty four a piece. I think so. Actually. We probably so should have given it to you, time. so it's fine. But... All right, perfect. Grab that last one. Dunk, dunk, dunk. All right, All let's right. Go get these boys back into the other siding here. This is the worst switching engine because it's so slow. 
Right. Class and 48 loud. has all of the acceleration all the time. This thing, not so much. Yeah, but but was so the climax did it have? I know what you were saying we were talking about this last episode or a couple episodes ago or something. Uh, you know, gear engines where you could swap the gear ratio out. Did the climax have swappable gear ratios? So or the it class just A big? climaxes that were smaller than this did. Class B okay. climaxes like this did not. Uh, but the climax is the only one I'm aware of that did have different gear ratios. Interesting. But again, it was it was the small ones. It was the class A. All right, bring him ahead. We'll just yeah, I went full there. reg. Can't can't go. Can't ever go full reg. You can't go full reg at this choo choo. You really can't. All right, you can just unhitch it and I'll stop. Oh yeah, we're kicking him. There you go. Bye bye. Whee. Then we'll grab the next. Perfect. So I've noticed you've uh, successfully parked all the um, cars. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know what you're I've talking about. I've unloaded the rest of the lumber working for you, so you should have some money there. I'm going to just leave these ones conveniently parked here in this lane. Uh, uh, not all over the grounds? Like yeah, well, I, you know, I thought about it, and I was like, I could leave them on the track. It might seem a little bit better. I'm going to go back to the helper station and park standing by. And um, <laughs> make standing by, by be standing by. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, you know, standing by. I think we'll might as well leave the class 48 there as well, because I think next time if we go to the coal mine, we're going to need both. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, yeah. we needed both to get here. You, you actually should go down and fill it with sand. And true, then I should fill down. this with sand yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, before I park it. Yeah. That is a that is a good point. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, um, for, for those playing yeah. at home, there were, in fact, two pea cups uh, in that last little break. Um, and both were caused by me and my own hubris, so you know I'll take it. Heist likes to send it. I'm telling you, uh, it's it's fun. Okay, we got places guys, to be. When you guys do your normal tourist railroad stuff, um, you have I'm assuming you have like I don't know what they'd be called, like conductors, I guess, that are inside the train cars talking to passengers and like you know explaining stuff, historic stuff, or is yes, it just the, like... the the man who does the spiel. Yes, the spiel. <laughs> the, oh, you the guys spiel. don't do any spiel. No, we have a spiel. We have a spiel, and they talk oh, you have about. A spiel uh, too? Is your spiel like, "Hi guys, my name is Heiss." I have never done I'm, the spiel. I am middle-aged man, I have, and I like to send it. I have never done the spiel before. You've never um, done the spiel. No, I've somehow avoided it all this time. You, so. you need to do the spiel. You need to. You need to be like, listen, guys. Okay. Steam locomotives started back in the 1700s when guys wanted to learn how to, quote, send it. So, <laughs> I don't know, just make up some nonsense history. You know, actually, when was the first steam locomotive? You've got, it's like 16 something, isn't it? Or no, 17 first something? Steam so there were steam engines. First steam right? locomotive would be early 1800s, I think. I always right. get fuzzy on this because because Britain's history is different than our history. The first railroad in America, I want to say, is 1826, and that's a date I remember. But right, the and that's first... like that's all the world anyway. Like the, the rest well, of the yeah. world's irrelevant. There, there so. is no, there's nothing else other than America. Have you ever talked to an American before? Anyway. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> I get it. So I'm pretty sure that, that the Brits had their first locomotive in the early 1800s, earlier than that. Um, steam engines were being developed in the late 1700s, if I'm remembering. But uh, right, just now tractors and stuff inviting in a, a war uh, on uh, me being wrong on the history and the comments, I think, which is fine. Have you ever seen an old steam tractor running like an old, old? You know, yes, I have, because uh, my my family made some of the first ones. Actually, fun well, fact. No. Just saying. Heist, heist comes from money, everybody. No, nah, actually, He's actually, just, no, I don't. But yes, his family <laughs> was the steam tractor inventors of 19 oh whatever 1800 something. Yeah, if uh, if you go to Marion, Ohio, there is a Huber uh, Machinery Museum, and there is a Huber uh, monument in the uh, the graveyard there, and there was also once a Huber Mansion, which was like ooh big fancy. But I mean, that's like six seven generations ago. So no, I've not seen a penny of that. Uh, but yes, my my family actually it, it actually founded. It was like worth all of six dollars. It was worth six dollars at least. Yeah, no, my yeah, uh, back, back my then, which... great 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 grandpa 
founded the Huber Manufacturing Company in Marion, Ohio, which people don't remember because they went defunct in the 1970s, really. They made cool steam engines, steam traction engines, a lot of cool, helpful farming devices and things to help efficiency in agriculture and stuff. Um, but he also founded a more notable company that people do remember called the Marion Steam Shovel Company, which later became known as the Marion Power Shovel Company. And uh, they did some things like, I don't know, dig the Panama Canal and built the crawler for all the rockets that NASA uses, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, that's my great, great, great granddad. The Edwards so, uh, like, that my middle name your, is named your, for. Your family history... Like you were gonna, you were gonna work on a steam engine no matter what. That Apparently, was, it has it has been since me and Edward. Like, you go like up, my my around. dad, my dad doesn't do it. My granddad didn't do it uh, on my dad's side. Uh, great granddad, no. Great great granddad, no. But great 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 granddad, yeah. He was an inventor into steam stuff, and uh, you know it took us six generations, but we're coming full circle here. <laughs> See, my problem is like my dad was an engineer, my grandfather was an engineer, and I like so I was just I was going to, you know, get a degree in engineering. Yeah. So sort of my my dad and grandpa it. were lawyers, and I was just like, no, oh god, no, my, I don't my want any part of that. My became a lawyer, and like, they're interesting people. I love my dad. My dad is wonderful. He has helped me so much and given me so much support. Um, and helped me out and made it so that I could guaranteed go to college and all sorts of great things. And I will never be able to repay him for what he helped me out for. But I oh, watched his uh, I watched his career as a lawyer and I said, yeah, I don't want any of that. No, N literally none of that, please. Okay, we have sand in the freaking sand hole. <laughs> there, there is sand in it? I open up the sand hole and there's sand in there. But no sand comes out of the sander. Oh my well, you god! Know, it wasn't truly Sanders empty. Sander's clogged up. Cletus, Cletus, get the brush. Get well, the actually, brush. We gotta... so what what does end up happening a lot of times is that there's um, depending on how many sander pipes you have, there are dedicated traps that actually catch the sand and then put them in front of the air nozzle that sends it because they're air powered sanders on most later engines like the Climax. Um, and so you can have sand in the dome still, but if the traps are uncovered, then you're done. So, so that's not get, necessarily inaccurate. Oh, the dome is filling up though. It actually, it actually is filling up. That's interesting. Well, that's cool. So what happens? If you have hot sand from the boiler, right? Or is it insulated between the boiler? And the it's dome? insulated like, between the boiler and the dome, and yes, it is hot. But I mean, that helps keep it dry, so that's helpful. Yeah. Yeah, it's actually it actually fills up. There's actually an animation to fill it up. It's kind of cool. The little sand balls seem to hit it and then ricochet off. But that's a little strange, but it works. We are filling the sand dome, though. I'm just gonna let this fill to full and then park this baby away. I can't believe the. Uh... Yeah, I can't believe it, that we were out of sand. That's insane. <laughs> it's a little silly. There's no way it came full. Like, there's no way we burned through all that sand. If we right? burn like, through that much in on this hill, then the sand consumption is ridiculous in this game, and it really doesn't need to be. So sand consumption is ridiculous, and then firewood is not. Just nothing. Um, yeah, they're just opposite. All right, I think it stopped filling now. I'm going to close this. So I had one other question just before I park Climax away. Um, it's got a wooden floor, which appears to be just built on like two metal eye beams. Like, yeah, just... it's uh, it's a little strange that that model. I mean, is you that do, legit or is you that do not... have wood floors and cabs, but you probably don't have what looks like a four by eight sheet of plywood just like slapped on top of the wood frame. You would probably on top of have beams, something. Like you'd have, like you'd a have metal some frame. superstructure of some variety. Yeah, that's a right. that's a little jank, even for logging engines. But like wood floored cabs, like do you definitely, have a, definitely a, a thing. The the cabs on all three of my engines um, at the museum, they all have wood floor. Some of them are different than others. But are they like wood floor? Like if I drill a hole through the wood, it's just wood and nothing below it, or is it like wood floor on top of metal? It's wood like, on top of like quarter inch sheet metal usually. Yeah. Right. So there is a protective barrier there. That's good. yeah. Yeah. It's not just like wood acting as part of it's a. It's not just like oops, I put something. a hole in the floor. And there's the track. Like you know, it's. Gotcha. Yep. For a second there, I couldn't move my camera. That was a little strange. It's fine. Interesting. But yeah, right, I'm, I'm uh, about approach. ready to come back up. How are you doing? Oh, are you coming down? Yeah, I'm like already here with you, bud. 
What's up? Oh, you are. Oh, perfect. Well, hold up a second. Just don't don't nope. go blare nope. it on I'll too wait fast. For you. I want to I want to get on board. Just let me park this engine away. I want to I want to I wanna witness the uh, the climax going into the hole here. Ah, uh, yes. This is uh. It's an important moment. It's the first time it's it gets the its most new home. Important part of the episode. Really. It's it's like it's you just... it's like you when you bring the dog home from the pound and, and you get to have him go yeah. home for the first Wait, time. You parked class forty eight on the other side. Yeah, right. I did. Yeah. yeah. And like a good man, you're uh, not opening the doors because I didn't. You ready either, for so. my, the immersion? Your immersion right here. The immersion, the immersion. It's ruined. One of these days. <laughs> one of these days, they're gonna update the engine shed with collisions. And we're going to break everything engine. we own. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> That's gonna happen. Ah, uh, what's up, goat? It's the goat and standing by. We just <laughs> the you goat know, just, standing by. Standing by the goat. Yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Standing by the goat. Exactly. There, there you right, go. Perfect. Get out of here. That was wonderful. We actually have a lot of iron now. I'm just gonna go check because it's uh, yeah. Well, wait up a sec because I can actually I mean, hop back on to help okay. there. I'll just uh, turn the throttle off and I'll just keep rolling. You can jump on. It's fine. It's uh, 120 iron out of 290. There you go. Dude, that's that's twelve. That's two. That's two runs. That's two full two runs. Two runs. Yeah, we have six hoppers. We should buy more hoppers though. With how much money did you get? Let how me much see. Money yeah, to uh, I've got a thousand dollars, so we can buy one more. <laughs> wow. I can't believe you made a thousand bucks on that, or eight hundred. Eight hundred bucks, yeah. It's a thousand forty-one. Say about eight hundred dollars, which is pretty solid, honestly. All right. Well, let's head on back to the freight depot and just uh, park this stuff. Yeah, get her parked, get it done. Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of next things we can do, we could do another run to the coal mine. We only have two cars of rails, um, but we could do two cars of rails and a bunch of cars of beams. Could, uh, just easily. To, just to and I, and I we could try and tackle mine. the 10% with... With only three engines? I mean, we, I could, mean, well, we, could, bring, engines? we could bring four. We could bring Betsy and, and have or two engines we apiece. Should, we should just probably just actually work out some tonnage math and we, see... That would probably be wise and see what, what we, we have to, to What we yeah. have to bring. But yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comments down below. We're just going to head on back. It's not really, not really much doing here. We probably yeah. shouldn't derail. I probably and, shouldn't uh, derail, yeah. and uh, I'll be good, I promise, I swear. And then I, we're just going to go put the train I'm, back. I'm pressing it. X to doubt right now. But, uh, yeah. Shh, shh, it's fine, it's fine. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll catch you guys all next time. Catch you next time, folks. Bye. Bye.